Hey guys, this is Broker Brett with the Attachment Point News Roundtable. I'm Jimmy Padilla, a float bot who's coming to the U.S. for the uh, GIA Accelerator. You know, at least virtually right now. I'm telling Jimmy, you're already here. You're in San Francisco. So good job. Yeah, it, it's, most it's of the way. Good to, yeah, it's absolutely great to be, you know, be part of virtual events these days. Your, your location doesn't matter. So hey, mm -hmm. Brett, thanks, thanks for inviting uh, for this meeting. Yeah, no, I'm super excited. So uh, Jimmy and Floatbot have an award-winning chatbot in India. They're going to be part of Global Insurance Accelerator, you know, next week. So today is Thursday, or sorry, today is Friday the 9th. And then on Tuesday, what would Tuesday be? The, the 12th for you guys to get started out here? Yeah, that's right. Perfect. Yeah, I think no, it's 13. It's, it's, yeah, 12, 13. Yeah, it's, it's 13 to 15, I think, yeah. That's cool. No, it's exciting yeah. stuff. I'm excited for you to plug in. Um, yeah, I work with Fineo out of Canada. They just were part of a big accelerator in the U.S., made some awesome industry contacts, you know, some great mentoring sessions. It's going to be huge. And so, Jimmy, uh, what part of India are you out of right now? So, we're based out of Bangalore, and uh, yeah, we're we are part of uh, NASCOM uh, AICOE. Okay. So uh, that's 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 a government-run COE that incubates, uh, you know, AI startups. That's awesome. Uh, no. yeah, right? yeah, it's it's an awesome place to be in Bangalore, uh, especially with a lot happening. You know, it's it's like a Silicon Valley of India. That's or really cool. As well. And uh, so Jimmy and I are lucky to have had a couple conversations, and it's just fascinating how he was saying with the scale of kind of India, China, you know, Asia in general, you need chatbots to work you need ai to be helpful just because there's so many people to you know service and help and that that kind of connected a few dots about why you know your ecosystem works the way it does and maybe some things we can learn is you know the workforce and insurance is shrinking getting older we're going to need different tools to help you know service people fluidly make sure everyone can get what they need you know in real time yeah so i, I would say you know uh uh, you know, we, we started, uh, let me give a little background. We started mm -hmm. like N17. Uh, we started working across, you know, multiple verticals. And and then later we realized we need to narrow down into specific verticals, specific use cases. Mm -hmm. And that's when we started interacting with, uh, we met, uh, you know, a few of the insurers, carriers last year. And, and they came to us about their specific problems. And, you know, talking about, uh, digital sales, uh, you know, because insure techs are, are are coming very fast, and the conventional carriers they are, uh, you know, they have to keep pace with 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 the the transformation digital tools as well. So, yeah, some of the problems they came with how to increase digital sales through conversational AI, and you know, that's when we started working bit by bit, uh, and and then came up with a a very comprehensive solution to increase digital sales by mid 2020. And the timing was was right as well. I mean, COVID hit the world at the same time. And, you know, everybody was working from home, physical meetings were not happening. And and the need really uh, was right, the, you know, uh, to, 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 for tools like Floatbot to increase digital sales, you know, because right now agents cannot meet uh, their potential customers, mm -hmm. insurers will need to sell their Policies, so yeah, I would say COVID actually accelerated, uh, uh, you know, our our penetration, our reach, and we started approaching insurers, more insurers in India, APAC, Middle East, and and also US. So so yeah, that's that's our journey, uh, you know, of, of getting here. We applied for GIA probably in July, I think. We heard about, we got the confirmation in August, and yeah, we are excited awesome. to go to GIA yeah. uh, next. Week and uh, you know we're we meeting few insurers I think as a potential investors as well so yeah uh, look forward to the event and uh, and also having uh, more interactions with carriers uh, agencies as well as brokers in US yeah absolutely and it's I mean it's fascinating to me I had my first kind of to, you know activity around a startup around 2014 and 15 it was a data visualization startup and then I got an insurance around 2016, 17, and everyone was scared of like insure tech, insure tech is coming. And they looked at it as this like threat to their way of life. And I'm like, guys, like whoever uses best technology wins, tech is inevitable. And it's gonna help with the blocking and tackling. It's gonna help with the low level paperwork. People are still gonna need consultation. You're still gonna have to put together programs. But for the simpler activities, why not, you know? And I think yeah. your timing's excellent, you know? Do you feel like the whole industry pivoted over the past year or two? And I'm, I'm speaking with a very U.S. kind of centric lens. You know, I know Asia's operated differently, but 
at least in terms of us like it's open you know it's looking for change right now which is really interesting so i think you kind of hit the nail on the head of the timing being right yeah yeah so yeah we're getting uh so uh, you know for example we are meeting one of the carriers in a couple of hours uh they're looking to revamp that distribution so yeah i mean we are we're definitely seeing the need on on the traditional carriers they want to revamp the uh you know the, the distribution uh you know so for example when we started uh you know a couple of months back we were focusing only on carriers in india and then some of the carriers in india who are who have uh, a large workforce of captive agents and they told can you build can you do something for the for this captive agents as well and then we told why not you know that that sounds like a great idea so then we extended the same bot that can assist the captive agents to digitally sell insurance you know amplify their their capability so so then we got another set of solution for for agents and then they came back saying you know can you do something for the agent recruitment as well so i mean you know one led to other the other led to third and and then now we have one of the carriers who who came with a problem that uh you know uh, they have a they have a 50 employee telemarketing team uh they typically get uh, you know leads uh from various social channels and the problem is that only 0.24 percentage of the calls they actually close so oh, wow. out of 1000 yeah. calls only 2.4 calls actually uh you know uh, close or or completes a sale so that means that you know 998 calls are are typically waste so yeah. you know how to use a voice bot where you know uh, where we can make outbound calls to this potential leads and uh, and and uh, you know at least gauge their interest you know mm-hmm. get a couple of do some level of qualification whether you know uh, is this a serious lead you know uh, do they have a couple of questions and you know can can have some interaction for a couple of minutes uh, and a voice bot can blast like like 100000 calls a day you know so uh, crazy and 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 uh, and and for example if 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 they are interested then it would set up a appointment with with an agent or actually hot transfer the call to an agent so so definitely it, it you know so the problem we are working right now is to to reduce the customer acquisition cost uh basically and they also have so basically in india they have a customer acquisition cost of roughly uh you know 50 dollars which is not too much if i compare to the us market but yeah still how can we get that get that uh, reduced as well as to increase the agent productivity as well you know mm-hmm. because out of every 1000 calls if 998 are are are, are waste then definitely there's a huge potential to to increase that productivity where agents can only focus on the the right set of customers you know or relatively oh, totally. hotly yeah so so then so you know and and then you know uh, we got a requirement from a large group in singapore where they want to do a similar telemarketing for for a bunch of 500 agents you know independent agents doing the same stuff you know what we did for what i just mentioned about carrier with outbound voice calls etc so yeah definitely i would say you know uh, there is a need to 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 transform and uh, you know uh, so yeah, it's it's exciting to uh, to to be uh, to be part of this journey in in the digital transformation of you know oh, yeah. insurance industry working with with carriers agency groups you know where everybody is looking for some digital tools to enhance their sales capability automate mm-hmm. the support and and achieve with lesser cost you know more revenue uh, more digitally and you know amplify their their bandwidth 100% and um yeah the blocking and tackling the pre qualification if you can use the bot to make sure people are interested can you i mean i did probably 15 cold calls yesterday uh, my business partner wants to get in the automotive space he's been more on the service side before of insurance so i kind of hopped on the phone got a couple leads you know <laughs> call a few people um <laughs> Yeah, I mean if there's a way to sort of automate that up front and kind of do that filtering that'd be huge. You know, we were excited two of the 10 calls ended up turning into getting an email for extra information. You know, so you know, it's funny I'm realizing for a tech guy, I kind of learned about sales from baby boomers and older folks. So I have a lot of that grind, but even for myself, I need to like level up how I'm operating. Um yeah, and yeah, time, yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah, and especially considering, you know, population of India which is like a billion plus. Yeah. you know and, and and insurance penetration i i would say is is, is still you know probably in single digit uh, so there is a huge opportunity for 
to 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 have automation when, for, when you say you know, penetration do you mean like home insurance health insurance life insurance like generally just people don't have insurance products in india and i'm i apologize yeah, I mean, so, so unlike in us you know in india insurance is not mandatory except for vehicle uh, you know house insurance health insurance uh, none of that is mandatory it's optional so you know it has it hasn't it's 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 in a it's an early stage that's why india is considered as one of the uh, you know one of the uh, large market for insurance mm -hmm. well. and same if i talk about in few other regions of apac you know indonesia philippines uh, thailand etc you know so for example in us yeah. health insurance is mandatory right uh, you know so in india it's not for the most part yeah no it's um i mean it's kind of mind blowing i mean i grew up at javela county um you know i've been out of the country seven eight times you know um but the things you take for granted, you know, and I feel like insurance makes you whole, keeps the wheels turning, something burns down, they rebuild it, you know, something, car has an accident, you get it fixed and just everything keeps rolling without that stability, you know, it makes the entrepreneurial journey a little bit more challenging, it makes the personal journey a little more challenging. Um, yeah, I, I didn't realize the penetration was like 1% in India for insurance across the board. I, I, I won't say 1%, yeah. but it was a single digit. You yeah, know? Uh, no, it's still though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in a, in a, in a country of 1.3 billion where, you know, almost yeah, 70 percent are in rural areas. I mean, there, there are enough government schemes as well that are coming, oh, which fair. are giving free insurances, you know, up to like, like $10,000 or less. Yeah. In terms of health insurance, et cetera. Those are, those are coming as well, you know. Uh, so, yeah, but, but still a, a, a lot, a, a, a long way to go. And, and definitely it, it has proven a, uh, a testing bed for us where you know we can we can potentially uh you know you build solution uh, mm -hmm. uh, test in shallow waters you know with uh very quickly with lesser set of regulations like yeah. in us you know uh it's, us highly regulated market yeah. so so you know it's, it's not easy to actually uh, get quick uh, you know uh, uh, opportunity to work mm -hmm. in the production environment like we can get in um, you know in india or philippines or a few of the other apec countries so it's a good, uh, I would say, an opportunity to to uh, for us to 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 first build for India and then take it to uh, mature markets like US. Well, what's interesting is you know, so I've done a lot of property casualty insurance, but then now lately I've been working on life insurance, kind of ties over to Fineo. People don't have to buy life insurance, so it's a little bit more of a push and an argument to say, hey, like you have two kids, you have a house, like. Yeah, heaven forbid, I don't want to think about it, but we at least need to have a couple hundred thousand, maybe a million dollars to sort of shore things up if, you know, these worst case scenarios happen. But sales when people don't legally have to buy something is a lot harder. You know, auto insurance, you know, business insurance, I'm just waiting for the right time of year, you know, try to get a hold of the company three to six months out, you know, try to go hold the person, you know, a month or two out. But um, I know those transactions have to happen. But on the life insurance side, it's mustering up the ability to go make the argument as to why your friend needs to buy it. You know, it's a different yeah. animal. Yeah. And that's, that's the reason actually, you know, we started with life insurance and that's the mm -hmm. reason life insurance still has the, the least amount uh, in the digital sales, mm -hmm. probably like two to 3%, yep. uh, you know, or at the max 5% of the life. If, if I talk about either savings or, or protection plans, actually, you know, totally sold digital. The the that's that's one of the least compared to if I'm talking about general insurances, right? So so yeah, I mean uh, we're also actually uh, you know that that brings to a point where you know uh, uh, I mean few carriers do ask us are you focused on a specific uh, insurance line? You know whether it's it's PNC or commercial or personal or and 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 we say that uh, you know at this stage we are still open, we are still you know working with uh, you know across the board. And yeah. probably, yeah, and, and we will try to find our sweet spot. And then if required, we may narrow down in well, one of them. But definitely, yeah, the, yeah. the problem is quite, the, the problem is, is, is quite large. And if I talk about digital sales, the problem is bigger in life and um, well, it might be health, the as well as in the commercial, yeah. in the commercial lines. I think um, so with commercial property casualty, there's a lot more factors that go into the rating and everything else, but life insurance, you get somebody's birthday, you get their zip code, you get their gender, you can quote, you know, life policy in three data yeah. points, you know, which yeah, yeah. if you're starting yeah, so, somewhere, I think that works. Yeah. Yeah. So right now, yeah, we are, we are starting with, uh, so we are, we are doing stuff for life and uh, personal lines. 
as well as we see a good fit for uh, the SME commercial lines, you know, the, the, the small business commercial lines, which are relatively, you know, simpler compared to the mid right. to large commercial, right? So it's, it's pretty much standard, the mom and pop stores, you know, they, they don't- So you can broad brush 95% of it, then your headcount, your revenue, you know, making sure yeah, you have exactly, the right classification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah, right. Yeah. And, and, you know, give a conversational approach to it to get real-time quote. And then we are also working on, um, you know, uh, recommendation engines and robo advisory, which can, mm -hmm. which can give more personalized, uh, you know, uh, which can have more personalized interaction with each of them. So that's something in pipeline as well. I know. do worry sometimes with the automated sales. I personally want, would want an ideal world like guardrails on what can get bought through my website. You know, like <laughs> I wouldn't want really low level auto insurance. I don't want people to be able to just click through and buy something that I don't think is going to service them properly. Um, so my mind as an agent, yeah, I always want the ability to bracket it, be like, okay, at minimum 50, 150, you know, 50,000, 100,000, 50,000 for, you know, the individuals in the car for property damage. And if you want to go below that, like reach out to us, you know, I'm definitely game to automate stuff, but not, I don't want to automate bad insurance and kind of, that's my, my agent hat, my agent two cents for the day, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so definitely we have, we still, you know, as I've told, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, you know it's, it's quite early in the journey. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, totally. And yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's I think it's just the beginning of the journey of this digital transformation in the insurance industry. And a oh, lot it's ridiculous. Really. This is yeah. A, a yeah. lot has to be done, and um, and yeah. So uh, probably you know we are we are still scratching the uh, the the quite you know shallow waters. Probably you know it it would mature in next three to five years. And that's, yeah. that's, that's the wave that we want to be part of. Right? I was gonna say next hundred so, years. I mean, it's interesting to me, like I haven't made this comparison in a long time, but compare the internet to the printing press, you know, we're going through a Renaissance industrial, a digital revolution. Like we're just getting started. That digital layer is falling on top of the brick and mortar and what was there before. And it's just extending it. I mean, you're, you're in India and I'm in Southern California and we're talking in sure tech in the United States and India. This is, it's amazing, you know, and, yeah like literally just getting started yeah yeah and, and then from digital now it's going to conversational that's what mm -hmm. we call it you know the mm -hmm. digital wave is now going to conversational where you know probably you know you're interacting with your uh, voice assistants at like google home or alexa or you know okay google on your cell phone so you know the digital also you don't you, you need not go to a website or mobile app actually to yeah to do a lot of stuff you know probably you can talk with your car and, and probably all your car will tell you that I need insurance or my insurance is expiring, you know? <laughs> so basically, yeah, we, we are trying, we're trying to, so the, the world is moving towards conversational omni channel. I mean, you, well, yeah, so, it's so cool. That, it's going to knock out like the blocking and tackling, you know, like you're saying the home auto life, small business, like those simpler tasks, you know, and then we get to converse with people, we get a plan, get a new strategy. Um, it's the jobs people kind of don't, don't want to degree yeah you know i mean like and we're just kind of helping take care of those simpler things so hopefully we can work on more complex things and kind of go upstream yeah. in terms yeah. of you know problem solving so, yeah. and, and i hope that that would also reduce the cost for the insurance you know yeah that's I mean, a great yeah, point perhaps automating a lot of those simpler stuff yeah would take away the, the customer acquisition cost also a lot of additional cost for these carriers and you know i mean insurances would be more affordable for that's for a great point line, yeah, yeah personal line for for small to mid-sized businesses. So, and definitely, I mean, we are not eliminating humans, but probably humans would be involved in more, uh, you know, sim more, more complex stuff, yeah. you know? No, totally. So, You're going to have the conversational AI engineers, you know, as opposed to, you know, call center to degree. Yeah, I mean, they, they don't need to make 998 calls to actually yeah. close to close. So, oh, totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, you know. I, I think it's cool. And I don't know, I just think things change, differentiate, jobs get more specific, more nuanced, you know, we're not, we're kind of breaking out of the factory mold and the factory kind of life right now. So it's going to be interesting to watch how all this plays out. And I, don't know, I appreciate you guys being willing to come to the States. And I feel very like spoiled that, you know, I get to work with a cool Canadian startup that we have talented people from India who want to contribute that, you know, we get to talk yeah, to people in yeah. London. It's, it's cool that we're all working together to make the industry better, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, if I talk about GIA, I think yeah. there are 20 insure techs, uh, you know, from US, uh, I think UK, Germany, and Australia. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, we, we are now called a US company as well because now, like, you know, we have, we have spun off to a US. So, now we are 
uh, like our company's domiciled in US, uh, you know, although we are all located in India. I was going to say, I mean, you're in San was, Francisco right now. Look at, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, actually, you know, actually I, I was in US uh, at the start of the year and, 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 and uh, intended to stay for like rest of the year as well. But because of the COVID, I, yeah. I came back. I came back to India and, and right now we are at a stage where, you know, it really doesn't matter. I mean, everything is digital, right? So whether you are in, in California or New York or, or somebody next to your home, probably you're still talking on Zoom. Oh right? yeah, so, that's cool. Yeah, so whether you're in India or, or in US actually, so yeah, it's, it's it, it really, so it, the, it doesn't matter, you know, you can, you can still sell it from India, you can still uh, promote and, and, and enter the US market from India, you know, so the physical well, barriers are, I think are, it's are great. You know, whoever's got the most talent, it's going to rise to the top globally yeah. now, which is mind blowing and I think beneficial for the whole industry. You know, right, right, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. So we, we, so for example, you know, in last three months, I, I think we, we interacted with fifty plus insurers, hmm. carriers, large carriers. Oh wow, yeah. Uh, in India, Singapore, you know, Indonesia, Philippines, uh, Australia, and also uh, U.S. And and I I. I think if if it wouldn't have been Corona, and none of those guys would have actually opted to meet virtually, yeah. they would all say, they, they would all say, okay, we we like it, but you know when can we meet? You they know? almost <laughs> they almost do like a vetting process before. I don't want to say punish you if you're serious. You're going to fly here and have this meeting. Exactly. Um, yeah. 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 Exactly. You have to fly. You know, otherwise things don't move ahead. And right now, you know, they don't they don't have option. I mean, we are closing contracts virtually. We are delivering virtually. So yeah, it, it's actually. Uh, uh, I, w- I would say uh, that's that's a good part. I would say for you know that the culture is changing and and this this was only possible for us you know uh, I mean in in this in this COVID situation yeah. where where people are open to 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 talk virtually to meet and also close deals virtually or sign contracts virtually. I had kind so, of an interesting personal experience where before half my time was doing the PNC to benefits agency and the other half was helping a startup. And then I fully like when COVID hit was like 90% messing around with startup stuff, hosting happy hours, like kind of getting people connected digitally. And now I've gone back to kind of building up my own brokerage again. So I've had to kind of pivot back to working on that more, but wow. it put the startup stuff on steroids while the classic industry was sort of figuring out what was going on and how to move forward. Startups were like, Hey, we're a laptop in a backpack anyways, you know, let's just keep building. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I, I know. I know so many founders who would who were frequent flyers between, mm-hmm. you know, San Francisco and New York. You know, they would they would mm-hmm. just have to shuttle back and forth, uh, you know, on a weekly basis to meet their customers. They're based out of yeah. Valley. You know, they're meeting a bank or insurance, and they would say, you know, you need to come down, and they would frequently fly every week to New York. I mean, you know, I'm, guess what? Man? It, it's yeah. not required, right? So. I'm happy for my buddies. I think it's healthier. I have a lot of friends who spend a lot of time on flights and, and you know, in airplanes. I think it's, you know. yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, exactly. So I, I would say, yeah, I mean, it's, it's given, it's given actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, birth to a lot of new ideas, new way to work. And, and definitely I think startups are, 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 are taking benefits of it. Uh, it's, it's become a global ground where, you know, it doesn't That's matter cool. where you're based whether in I, India or, 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 you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, totally. No, it'll, it'll swing back. I don't think it'll go all the way there. I think we'll get, you know, there'll somewhere be some travel, middle, yeah. some meetings, but they'll have to yeah, have some weight to them. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's somewhere it'll be in the middle. Yeah. I yeah. agree. It, it, won't go, it won't stay the same and it won't go back like it was earlier. Probably in between would be the, I think it'd be good yeah. though. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so what do you think? I mean, where, where is, you know, what do you think on, 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 uh, what are insurers, carriers? What do you think they are looking right now in yours? I mean, a lot of stuff happening in insurtech. Mm-hmm. You know, the word insurtech is now so-called has become yeah. so-called sexy. I would say. Yeah, it is weird. <laughs> you know? It is funny. I got into insurance because it wasn't appetizing and it was boring, and I was like, let me go do this thing that's not sexy that people don't want to do, and then I can like have this little corner. Now it seems like it's all where all the like the money is going and all the opportunity is, which cracks me up. Um, I'm still under the impression that more things are going to be automated. The agent's going to become more of like a marketing rep. You know, we're going to talk about the need that needs to be met, but we're going to do less of the blocking and tackling, less of the paperwork. Um, I think, you know, for your more direct cases, yeah, there's going to be automation and that's going to free us up to work on bigger things. You know, it's, um, it's going to be interesting. So for me, I feel like there's the main street agent and then there's the kind of fancy sort of middle market commercial 
in the high net worth. And then there's this whole other realm of like the aeons and just creating programs for like a Disney. So I wouldn't pretend to know what that is. Uh, that middle market segment is something that as more blocking tackling gets done lower market, you know, guys like myself may be able to compete a little bit better in. So who knows, maybe we all go a little bit upstream, you know? So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, true, true. I mean, so yeah, let's, uh... Uh, there's, there's a lot of things to do. I mean, you know, the and, and the good part is, you know, when we are laser focused on something mm -hmm. like, you know, like, like insurance, insure techs, we actually, you know, the devil is in the details. So we do get to know about the problems, uh, the deeper problems, I mm -hmm. would say, very specific problems and, and how we can address them. So that that's what has been an eye opener for us, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, or I would say the right thing to, to be laser focused. Yeah. And, and well, it's interesting. With Global Insurance Accelerator is really earning its name this year. You know, uh, it's cool that it's bringing everybody together. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah I've actually, the first time we applied, and I've, I've, I've heard from so many mentors that you know, well, unfortunately, it's going to be a virtual event. You know, because they like it. They like it so much when it's yeah. when it's physical and it's it's a huge event. I think that happens. Yeah. And, you know, and they're like, oh my god, it's going to happen virtually. You know, they they're missing the, the. The, the the vibrance either you know the vibrancy of the physical event but yeah <clears throat> also gives an opportunity for global participants to to hop yeah. and hop out you know well there's a so, plus minus okay, i yeah. mean we're going to be biased towards what we know but i'm looking forward to seeing what you guys are able to do and what comes out of it this year and yeah you know, i appreciate you hopping on with me ahead of time yeah you know. thanks a lot brett yeah i look forward to i mean we are almost you know almost reaching thanksgiving and then christmas i know uh, you know, things do get a little slower, but yeah, uh, yeah, we do hope to rack in at least, you know, a few uh, POCs by end of the year and, and maybe sign some contracts. Uh, there we go. US. I think uh, you're headed the right place to get a few training. things done. Oh, yeah. No, you're going to yeah, be great, yeah. Jimmy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so where are you based, Brad? I mean, you know, right now you mentioned you're in Orange County. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I'm about an hour south of, or flight south of San Francisco. So when you're out this way, you'll have to connect. Yeah. We we had joked on a previous call about the movie Orange County and how yeah. it's a very accurate <laughs> depiction of our, yeah. our neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that actually that, that I was I was in college when I saw the movie Orange County and it's still so remembered. Funny. I still oh, yeah. remember. I, I saw, I think saw Jack Black for the first time. It was too funny. I think for all his initial days as well, and you know how how the how the guy cracks up i mean uh, you know the the message of the death city score yeah. uh, you know whole the whole uh journey that he goes through i mean and then finally decides to stay in orange County. Yeah, it, was, it was a beautiful movie you know i did, did it enjoy in the college. it's fun you know it's funny because i wish i could say it was all fiction but no it, it draws from some like goofy realities of southern california and kind of like a little bro -y culture and everything <laughs> it wasn't yeah it wasn't totally uh it wasn't totally off but you know it wasn't totally off, so no. there are similarities. <laughs> well, whenever probably you, I, I, I'll figure, I'll, I'll visit. I, I'll get probably. I hope I get an opportunity to visit yeah, Orange County should. and figure it out myself. Yeah. yeah, I hope that would be fun as well. So I'm just uh, like an hour drive from LAX, which is the major airport. So if you end up in LA, you'll have to, you know, chase me down, or I'll head up that way, or who knows? Maybe I, with, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, yeah. I was for for a good amount of time. I was in um, San Francisco, Palo Alto. Mm -hmm. Uh, Saratoga, you know, and it's in a general, rad place little, in there. Yeah, yeah. Mars, little for for a short stay in, in U.S. in in New York as well. So we were we were invited by Plug and Play. Cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. For for one of the I think accelerators there. Yeah, it was, it was it was good. I opener to be in U.S. market for the first time. First food board. I mean, I've I've been to U.S. for uh from from my previous roles, you know, in in U.S. a couple of times. But yeah, it was first time for me. In US for float board and, and it was really uh, you know it was really great to 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 see uh, you know US working for us. No, that's awesome, uh, and I hope like I hope you had a sense of openness and excitement and investment. Um, that's I don't know that's a beautiful thing about the US, and I think Canada is actually crushing it right now. But smart, competitive people want yeah. to come here and do big things, and I I think we're blessed to have that you know, and I hope we keep that reputation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, elections are around the corner in US. So yeah. It's interesting. You know, one person is, yeah, it, it's politically a little, yeah, I mean, and then, yeah, we, we hope, I mean, uh, first of all, yeah, we just hope that things do get back to normal, you know, because yeah. I don't know, no matter what good we talk about digitization, but but at the end of the day, people are dying, you know, the, the businesses are suffering. It's, it's, it's not good. And, you know, uh, we hope we, I mean, you know, the, the, uh, there, there's a vaccine out, which, which saves the human from this. Oh yeah, you know, and not, not to yeah. put 
too much a positive spin, but I thought it was really interesting. It's the first time I can remember where different countries were working together. Everyone's communicating, you know, we, I don't think we did the best job in some ways, but um, Ireland was working on things. Yeah. You know, Australia was working on things. We're all in the same conversation. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. In terms yeah, of absolutely. And yeah, people, yeah, people need to need to work together oh, yeah. bit and help each other. Right. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Right now, even if somebody sneezes, you know, you, you kind of look at him or her at, <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, world wasn't like that, like a year back, right? It, yeah. it was like, bless you. You know, oh, yeah. give you a hug. <laughs> now it's like, yeah, it you know, <laughs> get out of get out of my sight. You know? Yeah, right. So, yeah, I, yeah. I think yeah. Hopefully, it, it, humans be more human. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So hopefully, oh, things yeah. do get back to normal. Yeah, in oh, a short while. And and the good things yeah. do still do stay, like the digitization and all. So still do do stay, and then you know things things get back to normal. Yeah. Yeah, I think. But we'll definitely, it's not going to get to the same state in terms of you know the culture of you know being in office is going to change. A lot of things are going to change. So. I still think for like sorting things you'll go in person, but when it's just blocking and tackling and execution, people just do it from wherever. Yeah, I think yeah. at the flip side of this, at least in the States, you know, maybe 25% full-time office, and this is probably knowledge workers, 50% um, two, three days in, two, three days out, and 25% like fully remote, you know, which is nice. The freeways have been yeah. less ugly too. You know, I think I it's beneficial yeah. in a lot of ways. I agree, you know? I agree. Yeah. yeah. Cool, yeah, I totally agree. All right, Jimmy, well, we'll have to do a follow-up after GIA and see how everything went, but I appreciate you hopping on to kind of hit a few topics, and I'm excited for yeah. you guys. And, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. See, see you at GIA, I mean, thanks, thanks for inviting Sounds me. Sounds good. I'll be watching. <laughs> and see you at the GIA and, and talk to you after the GIA.